So we have um, the social selling funnel, and what I would say from the outset is that this, the emphasis is on the customer here at the, at the forefront and, and listening to their wants and needs. And it starts off with the sales team, you know, building up a network online uh, of previous customers, existing customers, potential customers, um, particularly on, on social media, listening to what they're saying on social media, listening to their wants and needs, interacting with them, putting out content there and seeing what the engagement like and so on. So there's a listening element then of, of building this relationship. And then in conjunction with the marketing team, the sales team, um, create content which aims to, first of all, attract attention, but build trust. Um, this obviously requires a close working relationship between the two departments, between the sales department and the marketing department. I suppose, first of all, to understand the type of content that is going to meet the wants and needs of prospective customers, um, but also to attract the attention and answer the questions that people are, are wanting to know whenever they're making the these sales decisions. Um, and that's that's done. You know, your sales team, your your account managers, your um, onboarding teams deal with these customers on a daily basis. So, of course, they're going to have a, you know a, a mindful of information where where you can create content on. And we'll we'll speak about content in a little bit more detail. So then, once the content marketing and the content is created, then it's it's really you're moving on to the third stage there, which is about nurturing the leads, nurturing prospects, um, which are identified on social media. You, you're nurturing them down through that buyer's journey, which we see at the bottom there, from awareness to, to purchase. Um, and these three stages are what social selling is really all about. It's about using social media platforms to to research, to prospect, to um, network, uh, and sharing educational or informational content which answers questions and nurtures those prospects. Then, ideally, as a result, you know they're able to build a relationship, to be able to build that trust, or to be able to, you know, uh, believe in that business that they're able to, you know, do what they, they say they can do through these insights that have been shared. Um, and when that prospect is ready to buy, and um, when they're ready to to purchase something, that ideally they then go to you. You know, they they, they contact you first. They've they've you've been they've been nurtured along this this process, and uh, they then contact you. Now this could take six months, could take a year. Um, and if you think about it, a lot of B two B businesses generally have high value items. They require maybe a significant investment, whether that's software and um, construction, which has operational implications to the businesses, and you know, a, a business to consider um, a high value item, you know, does require a lengthy sort of research process, which could take you know over 12 months. I was recently working with a, a quarry manufacturer who, who manufactures equipment for a quarry and their sales cycles can take five or six or even ten years. Um, so it it can take a long, a long process and that's what this social selling does. It, it it's a long term strategic thinking process. And that's why social selling it can be such a good fit for B2B business because of that long sort of drawn out sales cycle. And then the 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 last stage there um, the aim of this last stage um, brand advocacy is to encourage customers who have had positive experiences um, to share them then on, on social media, to recommend and refer your business to other businesses. And we do see it all the time, particularly on LinkedIn. Users may put up a post saying, can anyone recommend a good tax accountant or, or a website design agency? And you know they'll have a, a, you know, a ton of recommendations. And that's where you, you want to get to through these positive experiences. And let's I guess this social selling process does empower both the sales and marketing teams to better understand, I suppose, these others' challenges and what their roles are. And but what that does is provide better insights then for, for your content. Um, it does increase the number of actions that you have and engagements that you have on, on social media with and the number of interactions you have with, with prospects, which generates high, higher quality leads and ultimately should lead to, to sales. But that's not the pr pr 
um, primary focus, it's, it's on the relationship. Um, I am going to expand further on each of those four key stages in the social selling funnel now. What I got, just before I do, I do want to make it clear that I'm not advocating for an adoption of a total social selling approach and ignoring any traditional methods and saying that's you know much better you know one over the other um, because these traditional methods have obviously worked over previous years. What what I would recommend you know if possible or what encourages is you know to engage in in social selling to to try it and um, proactively, you know, funnel out this process um, if it brings better results than the traditional method, phase the traditional method out. Um, if they work well together, you know, keep keep them going both at the same time. And for best results, we do see a combination of both or an integration of both preferable. Um, so that's the, the funnel and we're going to work through each sort of aspect now. We're going to look at networking. 